This is the Oxendine Law Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Oxendine, and I'm here with my partner, Christine Palmer. And with over 36 years of combined experience, gosh, that's a long time. Yes. It flies by. In divorce and family law, we're here to give you the benefit of our expertise and our knowledge to help you protect what matters most. We're going to cover it all. We're going to cover from complex custody cases. We're going to talk about child support. We're going to talk about alimony. We're going to talk about high asset division. We're going to give you the whole overview of divorce and family law from A to Z and let you know why Oxendine Law is the place to go and how we make a difference in our clients' lives. So welcome to the Oxendine Law Podcast. And this is our first episode. It is. Christine, we've been talking about doing this for years. We have. This is a long time. And we're time. finally pulling it off. Long what do you time think about in the that? making. Yeah, no, it's been exciting. I feel like um, we waited till the time was right. It's been a lot of planning to go into it to make sure we were prepared for what we want to bring to our subscribers and our listeners. So, yeah, I think the time and the effort we've put in will show through our cast. Well, we're excited to be here and, you know, we'll be doing this every week. So, this is our intro episode and we're going to first start by covering the basics of why Christine and I went into family law, why we like this practice area so much. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't always think I was going to be an attorney. It's a funny story I had in my mind. I think my parents drove this in my mind. You know, you're going to be a doctor. You're going to go to medical school and you're going to be a doctor. You know, all parents are proud of their son that becomes a doctor. And I went to college and I was in a fraternity and I was also taking classes And I was playing sports. You know, not a lot of people know that about me. I was a Division I college athlete. And the pre-med track just was not for me. I was not ready to get that serious about school. (laughs) So I quickly turned to the much easier major of pre-law, right? (laughs) Whatever that means. And that's how I ended up uh, getting on the pre-law track, at least at school. What about you, Christine? When you went to college, did you know you were going to be a lawyer? I knew. I knew from 14 years old. I've had no other path my entire life. That's been it. Um, at younger than that, my family's all medical. I can't do blood. I learned really early I'm not good at math. So law was my preferred path. And then I met my mentor, which is what pushed me over the edge to know that this is exactly what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. Well, and you've got a unique story, right? So my parents, thankfully, are still married. They've been married the entire time, but not everybody is lucky to be in that situation. Christine, I understand maybe your background might be a little different. Did that contribute to your desire to want to get into family law? 100%. And I am lucky to not be in that situation. My parents made the smart choice to get divorced at the right time, for sure. That greatly improved our family and our family dynamic moving forward. So that is why I have elected to stay in family law. I am a child of divorce. I lived through it from that side. I am divorced myself. So I have those two perspectives. But that's why I've stayed in it. Why did I go into it? Because I'm telling you, when I met my mentor, within one conversation, that was the most powerful man I'd ever been in the same room with. And I'd met tons of politicians. I've met celebrities. I've met athletes. It was the ability to make a difference in an everyday life. Sure, celebrities can get out there and say one thing, you know, and people just follow them. This was just a regular guy. And the way that he impacted my mother, her mindset, and my entire family dynamic changed after one consultation with that man. And I was so impressed. I was enamored. And so I told him that day, I'm going to come work for you. And he said, you're 14. You're not working for me. (laughs) And so then I turned 15. And I did, ultimately. And I worked for him all the way through high school and undergrad until I moved to Florida for law school. And here you are. And we have a joke in the office, Oxendine Law, your divorced attorneys. Christine said she is divorced. Divorced attorney. (laughs) But you mentioned something I thought was, was interesting and something we should talk about, which is your parents made the smart decision to actually get a divorce when things weren't working. I mean, how many times do we sit situations where the parties decide they're going to stay married for the kids, right? Uh And they stay married and they've got this toxic environment and this bad household and they stay married for the kids when in actuality, the kids are not stupid, right? I mean, they're there, they're feeling it, they're breathing it, they're eating it, they're sleeping it. They feel the tension. They know what's going on. And Christine, correct me if I'm wrong, but all the psychiatrists, all the psychologists will say you're actually doing harm, right? harm. I mean, if you keep kids in a bad situation, you're actually doing them a disservice and it actually can affect how they will treat their relationships going forward when they get married or when they get a boyfriend or a girlfriend. It's actually much better for them to see what a loving, normal household environment is like before they graduate high school, right? Sure. No, that's exactly right. And I think 
there's sort of two sides to it. One being the emotional harm and sort of how you you're going to mimic your relationship that you grew up underneath. Right. There's that part. But also just showing your children that you can do something independently. This be it the mother or the father, right? Both sides. The idea that like it just comes off like I can't do it without them. And so having the bravery to actually step up and do it shows them a level of independence that I think has bred through so many generations. People think I can't. I can't do it without them. Even if they wanted to, it's either stay together for the kids or but how? How do I run a household by myself? But I know I was able to quickly say, hey, this marriage isn't right for me. And my husband was amazing. We're still best friends. Great dude. And I would have stayed in an unhappy marriage for years, probably, if I hadn't lived through seeing my mom get divorced, my dad get divorced. They both lived much happier lives post-divorce. So I think it gave me the courage to say, this isn't it for me and break that generational curse of we stay stuck in these terrible relationships just because. And I think that's very well said. And if you do it the right way, you actually can be better friends after 100%. the divorce than you were when you were married. Yes. So, but anyway, we got off on a tangent. This is supposed to be about our background, right? Yes. And why we love family law. So let me get back into that for a second. I would have never guessed in a million years, if you had told me when I was in college, even in law school, that I was going to be a divorce and family law attorney, I would have laughed at you so hard until I couldn't laugh anymore. My stomach would have been hurting. You know, when you laugh to the point where your stomach just kind of hurts because you've been laughing so hard? Hiccups. But I I graduated law school and there was, believe it or not, I worked at Longhorn Steakhouse. I worked at Longhorn Steakhouse. Did you know that about me? I've heard that story. Longhorn Steakhouse is a server in high school and sometimes during my summers in college. And so after my first year of law school, there was a lady that worked at Longhorn and her name was Sandy Palmer. How ironic is that? She has the same last name as you, no relation. Right. And she was a server at Longhorn. She said, you know, during the day, bless her heart, she's working two jobs. During the day, I work for a family law attorney. If you don't have an internship, you should come and and meet him. I'm sure he'd love to have you. So long story short, I go and do the internship and he's a family law attorney and here I am. And people say, well, you know, why family law? Why would you get into such an emotionally charged area of practice family? And I think that's exactly why. So what I've found, and Christine, then I'll turn over to you. You can kind of tell your experience. But we have a unique opportunity in family law to really make big decisions on people for the rest of their lives. I don't think family lawyers get enough credit. I mean, we're dealing with people sometimes at their worst. And these are big decisions they're making, you know. How much money do you get to walk away with when you get divorced? What's custody going to look like? What's your relationship with your kids going to be? Do you have enough financial support coming in on a monthly basis to sustain you so that you can pay the bills? I mean, those are big decisions. And then on top of that, we get all this one-on-one client interaction. So not only do we get to help people and we get all that personal connection, one-on-one interaction, but we're also doing really very important major work. We are. And I know that because that's how I got into it. I saw, like I said, what that one gentleman did shaped my entire future. And I don't have children. So I often tell my clients this sort of how I shape the next generation. Rather than have my own, I'm going to make sure we get yours right. So that is a big motivating factor for me as well. That's it. And and the other thing I liked about it, you know, I hate to be goody good. I think I'm less of a goody goody now than I was growing up. But I was a rule follower, if you can believe that, growing up. Uh. And so I would always get mad. And this is a podcast we can say, well, I get pissed off, right? When people didn't do what they were supposed to do, right? I mean, the law is the law. And if you don't, this person's not doing what they're supposed to do. That's not right. They need to be held accountable. Deputy Oxford. Right? And so, you know, isn't that what law is, right? You need to, you, you make sure people are doing what they're supposed to do. And you're making sure that your client is getting the maximum of what they can get under the law. Yeah. So yeah. I love that part. And then let's be honest, it's fun to still go to court, right? Yes. I mean, in yes. family law, we still get to go to court and we get to kind of, that's like a the last battle arena around today, right? Is to go in and have a good old fashioned, you know, butt kick and knock down, drag out, contested hearing. Although we try to prevent our clients from getting to that we point do. if we can. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I think that what, like courts, we always say it, right? Court's fun for us. It's not really fun for the clients, but it is a good time. And I think we do get... That's really where we get to show all of our skills because we've used them all up until that point. If this court's the first skill I've shown you, I've done you a disservice. I would never. So we have shown all of those negotiating skills, all of that creativity and working out agreements before we get there. So that really is culminating. All right, here's the last trick in the bag, you know? <laughs> That's right. And people come into our office and they are out. I mean, some people, not everybody, but some people, they're out for blood, right? 
and they want the show, right? And so we'll give you the show if you want the show, but we always try to get your dispute resolved outside of court if possible because people got control of the outcome, right? I mean, once you go into court and have a big, long trial, the the person with the black robe on, or as one judge said, I'm the one wearing the black dress, which is funny, by the way, is Tom Davis. I'll call him out, Gwinnett Superior Court judge. We're in the middle of a hearing one time, and I think the other attorney kept interrupting him, and he stood up, and he got his gavel, and he was mad, and he started banging on this, saying, don't talk when I'm talking. I'm the man here standing in the black dress, <laughs> which is funny to think of the robe as a dress, right? Yes. But uh, it's weird we, that it came from Tom Davis. If anyone <laughs> on this podcast has ever dealt with Tom Davis, yeah, even funnier coming from him. But that's why we try to keep out of court because you never know what you're going to get from the judge. At least if you resolve your case privately through mediation, arbitration, private settlement agreement, you've got control over the outcome. So you should exhaust all settlement options before you charge into court. But sometimes you can't, and that's when you have to have a good, aggressive lawyer that can and is willing and actually enjoys going in and charging into court. Right. How how often are you in court against somebody you can tell doesn't want to be there? Like the other attorney just doesn't want to be there. That's it. So, Christine, anything else to add about practice of family law, why we got in it, you know, why we are, offer such a good service to our clients? If you become a client doing a consultation with me, I'm, I'm pretty open. I usually tell my story in that initial consultation because I do want to build that rapport. And for anyone who's looking for a family law attorney, skill expertise, all of that is important. Don't get me wrong. Of course it is. But having that relationship with your attorney, I think is equally as important. I wouldn't take anything away from most of my colleagues. I think most of the people we practice against are good attorneys, but that doesn't make them good counselors. And I take think that counsel role is very important when you're selecting someone. So I do take a lot of pride in that. I can't be your friend. I got to be your lawyer. And I will tell you that as your friend, I'll probably give you different advice. I'm giving you legal advice right now. So don't go listen to your friends and don't tell me that when your friend got divorced, this happened or that happened. But building that personal relationship, because it is, it is shaping your future, your family's future, and really the whole next chapter of your life. So what a privilege to get to be a part of that. Couldn't agree more. So that's a bit about our journey into law and why we chose this path of family law. Uh, in the next episode, we're actually going to dig deeper into what makes Oxendine Law different how we handle cases with a personal touch, and why and how we go the extra mile for our clients. So thank you for listening to the Oxendine Law Podcast. I really hope, we really hope that you enjoyed today's episode, that you found it valuable, that it gave you really good insights as to what approach we take in family law cases uh, with both compassion and expertise and experience. So if you found this episode helpful, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. You can actually submit questions. Join the show, submit questions. We will answer those questions for free. Everybody loves for free. We'll answer those questions for free on the next episode. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and you'll be sure to get notifications on future episodes. You can check us out on the web, oxlawfirm.com or all of our social media. So don't forget at Oxendine Law, we play to win. We'll see you next time.